Welcome everyone to a, another DD Tech tutorial. Uh, my name is Robert and today I'm going to be walking you guys through how to make basic website edits for both website pages and landing pages. Uh, so to get started, uh, just log into your HubSpot account, uh, come up here to marketing, website, and then select either website pages or landing pages. Um, when selecting the two, you'll notice it always says website up top. You should be able to toggle between them to find your website pages or your landing pages, as well as blog posts, but we will not be going over that today. Uh, so in order to edit a web page, find the one you want, go down, click edit. And from within a page, you'll typically find two different ways of editing a page. On the home page here, you'll find um, the first version, editing in line. So when I click on a section to edit it, I can actually come through and add, remove text from here directly on the page happening live. Um, when editing like this, you also find that your toolbar is always sticking to the top of the screen. And this is where you can um, insert media like images, tables, um, CTAs, videos, etc. Um, it's also where you can make um, edits to text itself, such as changing the alignment, adding bulleted lists, increasing the line height, font size, font style, uh, all the basic things that you'd find inside of a WordPress processor are available to you right here. Um, and another feature of this page is you'll notice that um, everything is fixed. So when I say that, I mean like I cannot change the layout. So I can't, you know, drag this tier above this tier. I can't delete the an entire section. I can remove the text, of course, but I can't actually remove this rich text area or anything like that. Um, in the in the case of uh, this guy here, I can't even really change this image. It's just the background for that area, and it's hard coded into uh, the style sheet. And so you don't have as much freedom here. Um, but sometimes you'll also find modules like this. When you click on this guy, it actually brings up a side pane. Uh, and these are actually called custom modules as opposed to HubSpot's built-in modules like the rich text, which allow you to edit in line. Custom modules always edit in the side pane. Um, this is because custom modules often have a lot more options than just a um, plain uh, HubSpot default module. And as a matter of fact, these custom modules are sometimes made up of, you know, a rich text module or a form module, you know, all combined into one. Um, so this guy here is the DD um, all-purpose module. Um, that we have created that does kind of what it sounds like. You can do almost anything with it. Um, you can, of course, come in to the editor and change the text, add images. You still have your, your toolbar in the rich text area. You know, you could also do a form or an accordion. Um, we have options to increase the number of items per row, change the tier height. You can add background options. In this case, we've added a black gradient type background, uh, lots of other things in here. And none of those changes that you've done in here will apply until you hit the apply button right down here. Um, and after doing so, all your changes will be, uh, will show up in the main area of the page. Um, modules like this are also oftentimes um, rearrangeable. You could change layout, you're able to drag up and down and are also oftentimes deletable. Not always. Um, really, you'll know whether or not a module is draggable or deletable if you come over to this cube icon here that says Edit Modules, and you scroll down and you see sections like this that say Flexible Column that are inside these gray boxes. Any modules inside of those gray boxes can be deleted, dragged up and down, either from in here or from within the page, and you can actually add new content to the page. Anything with a solid white background is static and cannot be changed unless you edit the template itself, um, which is a topic for another time. Um, to give you an idea of something of a page that's kind of the epitome of flexibility, uh, let's go back to website pages. 
And let's come down and let's take a look at the products page. So from here, if we click um, edit modules, you'll see some stuff down here that uh, um, isn't as editable. These guys being specifically kind of all this extra stuff in the footer. But all of this stuff is edible. You can click on it and you can change the images or change the text. If you can flip their order if you'd like. Um, you can delete all this stuff. You can drag it up and down. Lots of different options depending on the kind of module that it is. And you just have a ton of flexibility uh, with the exception of stuff in the header up here and stuff in the footer down here. Um, so that is most of what you need to know for making edits to website pages. Make sure that when you're done making edits and you'd like to you'd like to actually publish them live for people to see, you can go to the top right hand corner here and click update. If you're not ready to push it live, but you'd still like to share your edits with someone or you'd like to see what it looks like live, you can come up here to this little eyeball icon, click this guy, open a new window, and the page will show you the edits that you have made, but they aren't actually technically live for the wider world to see. Then you can go ahead and just copy and paste this link, send it to your colleagues um, so that they can take a look, give approval, whatever process works for you. Um, but again, when you're done, make sure you click update. Now, if you ever make um, a big mistake, publish something you really wish you didn't, um, and you're not quite sure how to go back, or you know, it's not as simple as just you know changing the text back to what it was, you know, you've actually accidentally deleted something you didn't want to delete, something like that, um, you do have the option to undo if it's something you immediately just did. Um, Control Z will also work in uh, some browsers. Um, but then you also have this revisions tab up top. Now the revisions tab will keep track of, will keep, will create a kind of timestamp every time you push changes live. So if you're made, you're inside of the editor and you made a change before you push it live that you didn't like, that's when you need to use that undo button. But if you've published something already and you want to go back to what something used to look like before, all of those instances of, of publishing will be kept track of in this timeline here. And you can come down and you can click, you know, oh, what did this look like on uh, March 21st? Well, on March 21st, we didn't necessarily have all of these things. Um, and if we wanted to go back to that previous version, we could just by coming down here and clicking the restore button um, once you've selected the version that you'd like to restore to. Otherwise, if you don't, just click cancel and close, and you're good to go. Uh, finally, uh, let's go over the settings section. Uh, so the settings section in a page is where you'll find uh, a few things. One, the internal page name. This is just for you instead of HubSpot. No one aside from those in HubSpot will be able to see this. Then you have the products, or sorry, the page title. Um, and this is what will show up inside of the tabs. You can notice this up here matches the page title down here. Um, then of course we have our URL, uh, which for the, um, uh, the most part, um, once published should stay the same. Um, it's uh, to keep kind of the integrity of redirects and potentially um, mess, you know, you don't want to potentially mess up any of your data. Um, HubSpot has um, started to give support so that data isn't lost when you change URLs, but it hasn't been widespread. Um, we also have our meta description, uh, which is the text that shows up uh, in Google search results right below the actual title of the page, uh, kind of a little snippet. Um, and then we have our campaigns, which sometimes um, make sense to add, sometimes they don't. Um, and finally, um, the featured image. And this is the image that if you were to say, um, share this on social media, um, is that image would be kind of the featured image for that page that would show up. Um, but of course, you can uh, leave that off as well. Uh, below, we have a few more advanced options. You are able to add some custom HTML to either the header or the footer of this page specifically, if you know what you're doing. Um, and then if you want to access the template for this page and make changes to that, or swap out the template for that matter, you can do so. Um, but this is fairly high level stuff. Um, and so 
I wouldn't recommend um, messing with the template um, until you really feel um, confident in your ability to use the design manager. Um, and if you like to do so, we definitely have um, some videos on that, which you can uh, check up right there. Um, and yeah, uh, I think that is going to do it for this tutorial today. Uh, of course, if you ever have any questions, uh, go ahead and comment down below. And I should be able to get to all of those as um, soon as possible. Uh, resources, um, including a link to the all-purpose module, uh, will also be in the description of this video. Uh, all right, uh, so that'll do it. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.